All right, what's going on, guys? Back from running errands and making lunch and doing laundry. Um, I will do my best with the video. I am in a small house. There are kids, so I'll try to keep the interruptions to a minimum, but they will happen. First off, I am using a TS Prof. Little Blitz 360. It's the baby TS Prof product, but I've been getting good results. Um, Normally I wouldn't really tape this, but it's a good habit. Um, sometimes the blades get more grip with the tape, some don't. I mean, try what you want. I mean, it's not gonna hurt. That's what I learned. Half of the stuff I've learned to sharpen is I just tried it. Uh, first thing is, this is factory edge. Sharpie, Sharpie, Sharpie. Now let's look at the factory edge. Plunge grind here. You see how it terminates? And then at the tip, it gets a little fatter, and there are some rust spots because this is an old model. And then we'll flip it over. And you see how that one looks different there? These are probably gonna be different angles, but um, so what we're gonna have to do is make them match to a symmetrical bevel. And we'll start that. I got it clamped. I got it where my stone's gonna go straight down the plunge line. Um, you can practice or try it. If you don't like the clamp position after you try the Sharpie, you can reclamp, but first things get a Sharpie. Mark off your bevel. purpose of that is when you hit it with the stone you can see where the sharpie comes off that's where you are hitting the stone stuff I have on me microfiber lots of paper towels I'm on tools stones here four boxes of stones there got an angle cube uh, rubbing alcohol 90% or 91%, yeah, isopropyl. I am using Gunny Glide or Gunny Shine. I've been trying that. I have been using um, Trend Lapping Fluid, which is petroleum-based. So they both have pros and cons. I'm just trying to see what I like better. All right, um, stone I am using to start with because it's gonna need the profile and it is a hard steel. This is a uh, high hardness K390 from Zeki City. This is the 140 grit Atama Diamond Stone. I just want to see what it hits. Now, since I do not know the angle I'm going to hit it, I have to adjust, so I'll show you what I do. Add some of the gunny kind of shine there. And then I'm going to loosen this so I can move it up and down, and then I'm going to see. See that angle, how it's removing the Sharpie? I'm trying to get it where it's removing the most, because some of it's going to need to be on. If I tighten it there, you notice most of it's coming off here, but that very tip, I'm not getting any. I could readjust it, so I might do that, um, but I want to see what it does on the back side. This is telling me if I need to reclamp or where I'm going to have to work on. That is the purpose of the Sharpie. Very rarely, unless it's been sharpened on a fixed blade, a fixed angle system, are you going to get a new knife's a factory edge that you're going to get a perfect match at one setting uh, when you're trying to do this. Yeah, so I'm going to readjust it a bit and take a break, and I'll be right back. 
All right, this time I'm doing it all over again. Instead of angling it where I kind of run uh, parallel with the plunge grind, I actually ran the front of the clamps parallel with an imaginary line I drew from the pivot to the tip. Uh, some people do a heel to tip. Um, spider codes, I generally do a pivot to tip lineup so that I imagine a line there and then I run it parallel with the front of my clamps. So we'll try that to see if it comes off a little bit more even uh, when I remove the Sharpie with my first stone. I do, uh, I, I do recommend using a high grit stone. I'm using 140. Uh, but if you use too much, it may cause some extra work you don't need. But I'm just, uh, I, I've had enough experience why I shouldn't. Because you notice I wasn't going out, going uh, off on it. Still the same, I'm hitting the bottom of the bevel here and the top. So what I may want to do is adjust it where I get most of the front and I can um, reprofile this end because the flat's going to be a little easier and less trickier than doing the belly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clamp there. And then what I like to do for future reference I find my angle of where I am. Right now that is 18 degrees. I'm gonna make it an even 18, or 18.55, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it an even 18 degrees. So now I know for future reference, or if I write notes, that this one is at 18 degrees. You don't have to do that. You can just do the more, uh, Sharpie method every time you match, but um, preference. All right, so now the angle I have set and clamped this to is gonna be 18 degrees on this edge. And another tip, um, when you're starting, if you notice your stone is flat, your flat of the blade, which is the flat portion of your edge, is flat as well. There's no wiggle when you move it side to side. When you put it on the belly, you see that wiggle? So you're not always, when you're working the belly and tip, you're not always gonna be 100% on the stone. So just be aware of that. Um, when you're going up and down like this, you may miss some spots if you're not covering it evenly. I like to do sweepy motions to kind of cover it all. And I'll either, depending on what area I need to work, I might put a little bit more weight on the, the tip side than the heel, but that's just little things that I've learned um, that they may not necessarily go to go over. I'm just seeing how much reprofiling I need. And on this one, the, the plunge line's kind of curved. So I may just use their existing one. So I'm gonna flip and see what it's like on I guess the lock side. This is water based, so you may have to reapply every so often, or if you've been sitting without doing anything, don't go too crazy, but it will evaporate. So I'm just up and down, up and down on the flat. And I'm kind of doing sweepy motions. Now when I'm reprofiling, I don't always just go, some people do, I most of the time do this way. Um, as far as going from heel to tip up sweeps. But since this is my first stone and I want to grind away as much metal as I can, I'll go both ways. Plus it's a little easier to, on the tip, to go that way to stay on the tip. But most of the time when I'm finishing, I go upstrokes. You 
because that helps me set my scratch pattern one way and I keep it consistent without the stone. All right, and I do flip often. It keeps me kind of even on both sides. I don't want to have a huge bevel unless I have a, for a fact something off. But heck, if it's a user and not some customer knife, I may just leave it as is and let it naturally sharpen out like my one, one flip Delica. One side was way bigger than the other, but I didn't want to spend all that time doing that one. So right now I'm just trying to get the remnants of the Sharpie off. I'm not counting strokes. Um, it may be easier if you are starting off to do that. And it's definitely going to be easier to do a steel that's not KC90. Smaller ones are good. One clips are super easy. And then I'll kind of take a look in the light to see if I am still grinding away at the middle. I still have a little bit at the tip I need to grind on this side. For all intents and purposes, this side is um, getting to where the final edge is going to look like. And I never take at the tip, I never um, put more than half of my stone over the tip because then you can roll off obviously and round it. I mean people, that's a, a big issue sometimes with new sharpness. Uh, it just takes uh, muscle memory and just practice. I mean obviously if you're new you have to kind of concentrate more about it, but I don't. Um, and I still do it every once in a while, don't get me wrong. I'm getting a burr here and starting to develop there. I don't want to make it too big, so let's go ahead and flip and work this other side. Check your stone. Clean it off. Reapply just a little bit to wet the surface. all the stuff that's come off and you can actually feel when you're cutting into the burr you can actually feel it a lot of times when you're um, flipping and doing the other side so I just felt me cut into the burr there this whole time I'm putting maybe resting my hand in a little bit of pressure as I'm reprofiling but as I go up and rid out I'll, I'll lessen that And if it's a delicate knife or a delicate area, I usually just have the weight of the stone. And notice even though I need to work more here on the tip and uh, the belly, I'm not just grinding away at it and forgetting this side because then you're going to have a huge bevel here and a small bevel there. All right, back at it. I'm probably gonna work this side until I get um, get bird now. So right now, if I'm doing these kind of strokes from into the heel, up to the heel, all your scratch patterns are gonna be that way, but my final ones, I want everything going towards the tip. But we'll set that once we actually get this reprofile. I got to burr all the way from here and I need to work on this side. There's a little bit of Sharpie there that I haven't hit, if you can see it in the camera. See that little spot? So that's what I'm working on guys. So this is my 140 grit. I could go a little bit more aggressive, but I don't want to 
be too aggressive on this hard stone. The cool thing about uh, the Atamas is they actually have a, a pattern of all the diamonds instead of just random scatters of diamond. They actually have it in a certain cluster and the higher grits you get, the closer they are, but it, they form a really nice uh, scratch pattern. And since they're diamond plated, um, they're not the best polisher, but leaves a very aggressive edge. pattern to one way. Another tip I have is you can actually put your finger under the tip. Make sure you don't roll over. As you see, since this is a small system, it doesn't take a lot of weight to move it, so just be aware of that. I don't got the money for other stuff right now. So setting that, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this so we don't work too much on that side. Okay, like this one. I got a burr almost the whole way. I want to make sure we're nice and even. And if I, I'm trying not to forget talking, I'm not used to talking to myself as I'm talking, so I'm hoping this comes out okay, but just be aware that I'm not used to it. Obviously, if you guys watch this and there's a section that you have a question on, definitely let me know. And this is not the softest steel. This is equivalent to 10B K390. Uh, it is not stainless. It's got roughly 9 to 10% vanadium carbide, and then that'll make vanadium carbide with the carbon in there, which is what gives you really the strength and the teeth in your steel. Alright, I've got a burr the whole way there. And this is a four inch um, blade, a cutting edge. I think it's like four and a half, four and a quarter inch long. Right. This is probably going to be my final pass on this one with this stone. Now, if I wanted a better polish or a more smoother finish, I have different stones for that. Um, but for this one, it is going to be a user, and I want to see how aggressive I can get it with this first um, sharpening. So, I'm just going to use straight diamond plates. 
And I mean, don't be afraid to resharpen a knife. You want to try something else on. I mean, it's going to remove some metal, but it's not going to be some drastic effect where you're going to be taking um, off so much unless you, you've been sitting there grinding. And we've been here for maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes? This is all I've spent really grinding at this knife. You can saw how fast we reprofile, and I'm eyeballing the edge. got a burr so I'm gonna flip and just do some burr reduction strokes which is weight of the stone maybe if that go from the heel up strokes to the tip and you can feel it kind of breaking off or flipping it to the other side because then you can feel it and it flip the, the burr to this side now if you're not familiar with what a burr is as you sharpen a knife and you you sharpen this side this little extra bit of steel is the burr and then when you sharpen the other side it does this so you're constantly moving the burr back and forth if you've properly apexed meaning you've got to the tip so what you want to do is the, the cleaner and smoother you cut off the burr the better your final edge is going to be if that makes sense if you leave a burr it's going to hang up or cause some cutting issues or if you cut something that the burr will break off and then you'll have maybe a, a flat tip so the cleaner you take off the burr the, the better your apex is going to be your edge, edge result end result all right i did about two or three strokes there at this point you can, you, you'll start to know when you feel it. I don't really feel a big burr, but that's what stropping's for. Plus, as you go up in progression and grit, it'll also help minimize it. But I do recommend doing it at least on your first thumb because that's gonna be the your biggest burr formation. All right. Good thing I liked about these Atamas and using a water-based uh, lapping fluid is I just run it under the sink honestly and it cleans fine see all that I'm gonna wash that off in the sink soon but different stones may like different um, cleaning um, methods all right this is Atama 400 and what I would recommend is just getting any loose articles now if you are switching brands or types of stone I know for a fact all my Atamas are the, I'm not going to change it but I will if, it's, if I'm moving the, this from a, to a strop or a different brand I will make sure my, my angle was still at 18 because remember we set this guy to 18 earlier alright get that wet a bit I start like I said at the tip this is mostly to polish and refine. I'm not trying to cause a burr. Burrs are inevitable, if, depending on how, how long you work, unless you're just very well experienced with it. trying to go the same direction with my strokes that way all my scratch patterns are going this way from the heel to the tip and if that doesn't become apparent why I do that I will show you why I prefer to do it that way all one direction number one it's it looks cleaner if you don't make a, a super polished edge all your scratch patterns being in one direction look better than just all a bunch of X's I mean I guess that's preference but it's I think it also helps the final edge. All right, now I can, it's getting refined a lot. It's definitely not as, 
I don't think ugly is the word, but it's looking more refined, even though this is a really pretty coarse 400 grit edge. And while we're doing this, I am still trying to debate on how far to take this progression. Now I like to do this on, on this hand side because I'm, I don't know, I get more control. I feel like I have more control when I'm going this way toward the tip on this flip, but as I come over here, I get a little bit less control. So I, I just wanted to make sure I'm not um, rolling over. I'm definitely using a lot less pressure. And when you're also seeing is if you're under good light, you can see little glints of, if you see real shiny parts, that may be parts you need to polish. You'll see the lines from where your stones are um, polishing out the old scratch pattern. Like I said, you're trying to refine it and you're trying to smooth out those gouges that your previous coarse stone has put into the bevel. Obviously, if you don't care about the looks, you could finish this up quick. I mean, I don't care as much, but I deal with a lot of customers' knives. So obviously they care because they're paying for it, or friends' knives. Just like I said, I'm kind of moving my head around, the, uh, looking at it in the, in the light, seeing how the scratch patterns look, seeing if there's anything that's like apparent. Um, if you guys go to Gunny's talk, uh, Shop Talk and YouTube, he's got a, a bunch of wise um, videos about um, just theory and why he does something. Or um, The Knife Crazy um, has a lot of good stuff on there. And then Brian at KME has a lot of great stuff. Um, if you guys want, I could definitely link you some of the videos that I've learned off of. And see, that was basically two sessions on each side. This is the second session on my on this side here. I know people say they take a long time. I don't know how long you guys are doing or what's holding you up, but it's been maybe 30 minutes or so, and I reprofiled well, and I'm on my second stone, and I'm about to finish. I got a little burr. I will just flip. Flip. Feel it. And I, I do run my finger, my thumb here and I can feel it catch my skin. Now if you're like my wife and you have like delicate skin, don't do that. You will rip yourself open. So you can get a close up of that. I'm just sitting here trying to tap the dam. See how the, all the scratch patterns are going this way? And that's what you want. Alright. We are done with the 400. Atama 600 right here. All right, so right now it's been 15 minutes on this cut. A little longer for the whole video, but I'm just kind of doing different sessions. Wet that down. Now, the way I'm doing it, this is my personal knife, so I may not be being super careful, but just realize if you're doing someone else's knife or how particular you are with yours, there may be certain things you want to do, you know, to to protect it better. Um, I don't care, but I care enough that I want function out of it, but I'm not like 
you know, cleaning it off at, like super efficiently every time. But I do recommend at least wiping it down between stones to get in the, the uh, old stuff off and shavings or metal shore. You also, when you go upgrade, you're gonna definitely feel different feedback because the diamond patterns are a lot closer on this one than versus the 140 and 400. This one's very velvety, I love it. This is a good stone, the 600. And hell, this will be a good edge to finish on. But I, I'm really tempted to just take this to something crazy. I wanna see how nasty sharp I can get it. After this one, I may be done with the video and kind of go off on my own. But I will talk to you guys about stropping. Just careful not to go over the tip. And I can see the pattern disappearing from the old stone. I've been wanting a Thomas forever and I recently just got him. Um, talked to my buddy Eric about getting these and he was very pleased with them. And I was like, you know what? I might as well get these. One second. All right guys, I'm back. Had to um, take my daughter to the bathroom and I was getting a little bit of a drink break. All that stuff. Okay. Going the same direction. I'm not doing it a bunch of different directions or up and down because I'm kind of done grinding. I'm more, like I said, polishing the edge, polishing the apex. session on this side. Another tip is as you go up and grit, another way you can tell you're um, still apexing is when you're doing one side. I'll show you when I flip. depending on the, if you're using any sort of fluid. Some people do dry, these can be run dry. My CBNs can be run dry. Is when you flip after you dump aside and you can look at the very edge and you can see some, if you look real closely, you can see some schwarf that's collected being pushed because you're so close to the apex that it'll push to this side. That's a good way to tell that you've apex. That I'm, I'm trying not to forget anything. Like I said, I don't usually talk to myself or others or record myself talking. As I'm, you know, doing this. But hoping I'm not forgetting anything and I'm not looking as closely to the edge, but.
happy I'm not forgetting anything. That's 600 grit. Might take a break there and um, either take it up more or and then I'll record maybe like a stropping video next.